Hi, my name is Gordon Beaming and in this video I'm going to show you how to migrate pipelines and releases in Azure DevOps. Okay, so let's start off by looking at our pipeline and what the YAML looks like for that pipeline. So we just hit edit quickly. You can see we have, um, an, we're setting a name at the top, it's got a trigger, pretty much the normal steps. We do a build uh, with the, and you get restore. We publish artifacts and then we publish um, directly into Azure from this pipeline. So we can go ahead and run this pipeline quickly. Open up the log um, and let's let that run through quickly. Okay, so if we look at the version number, you can see it's 2020.09.29.2. If we refresh our app, you'll see that the version number in the app ends up updating and it becomes the same thing. You can see the point two updated at the end there. The next thing we're going to migrate is the release. So if we go and edit that release quickly, you can see that we have one stage called production and it also deploys directly into an Azure app service um, using that subscription and app. So we're going to create a release quickly. Just so you can see that it does actually run through. Um, but obviously this release will deploy the same version of the app that our pipeline just deployed. So we're not going to worry about looking at the results from this. Okay, so as you can see, it's all green. So let's take a look at the Git repo. Um, there's another video on migrating Git repos. So I'm not going to um, go into too much details here. Now that that's imported, we're going to click on set up a build inside that repo. As you can see, the YAML looks exactly the same as it was on the other side. We're going to go and hit run. And then you can see here that it needs us to authorize um, access to a resource. And that resource is uh, Azure subscription. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, permit that and then this pipeline will run through. Now that that's pipeline's completed and it's done its publish, let's take a look at our app again. You can see that the version number is 29.1 again. And the reason for that is because our version number in, in our new project uh, would have reset by the versioning scheme that we're using. But now, if you notice here, there's a change that was made before we migrated, uh, which I th thought we had committed, but we didn't. Um, and if we refresh our terminal, you can see that it says that we need to push a change. So we're going to go ahead and push that change. And something you'll notice, though, is it says that it pushed that to default. And obviously, we've just now migrated to Project Awesome. So if we go look in our Project Awesome pipeline, you can see that no builds triggered Yeah. Uh, if we go ahead to our default pipeline though, you'll see yeah that a build has triggered. So we'll go ahead and cancel this. Normally when you're migrating, what you'd want to do is mark your source repo as read-only um, so that no one can accidentally push into that repo. So to get this to change to our new repo, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, change into the git folder and we're going to open the config file uh, in VS Code. And if you can see there the path to our repo, we're just going to change that the defaults in there to Project Awesome. And because we've got a space, we need to specify the percent %20. We'll save that, switch back to our terminal, um, change the directory back out of the git folder and then we're going to go ahead and push our code again. And you'll notice this time now, uh, because we've updated that to Project Awesome, it's gone ahead and pushed our code uh, through. So let's just check that that is working. And we can notice there that it did actually pop up and our build is running as expected. And if we look in the history, we can see that our commit is there in the history. 
But the other change that I noticed that we hadn't made is that this still says default project. So let's go ahead and change this quickly to project awesome. And then through VS Code, uh, we'll add a commit message quickly. We'll commit that and then push that uh, to Azure DevOps as well. And then because we're pushing more code, this will again trigger another uh, pipeline to kick off. So let's just go and cancel this one. We don't need to wait for that uh, for the new one to kick off. Okay, so there's our new one. Again, this is going to run through like I did before. You can see the version here is 2020.0929.3. So let's let this finish. And again, yeah, if we go and refresh our site, you should see that our changes are now reflecting this. We've got our message from before, our project name's updated, and you can see the version number is the 29.3. So now the last thing to do is to export the release that we had from our default project and then go and import that to our project awesome. But before we do that, we're gonna delete the publish from our pipeline because obviously we want the publish to rather go off from our release and not from the pipeline. Um, so we'll just go ahead and commit that in quickly and then push it. And while this change is busy pushing, we'll sort of migrate the release itself across. So you can see that it's busy running at the moment. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit export. You'll see this gives us a JSON file um, that's got the whole definition in it. Then we'll go ahead to our Project Awesome to the Releases tab, create a new release, and we'll say we're going to import from JSON. We're going to choose that JSON doc and say OK. This brings up our release. You'll notice if you look at the artifact that the default um, project is still in that artifact, so it would normally reference across there. So we'll delete that and add a new one for the Project Awesome project. Still pointing to the sample app. And then we'll go into the first stage and fix the agent that it uses. The one step that I missed in this is if you have to click on the, the overall um, stage, you need to fix the Azure subscription as well, um, which are cut out of this um, which is another step here. So next we're just going to make this trigger off master quickly and hit save. And then if we view the releases you'll see at the moment there's nothing. Um, let's go ahead and wait for this pipeline to finish running and then that will automatically trigger our release. Okay so that's finished running. And if we just look at the uh, build and we look at the artifacts that it publishes, you can see there's a sample app.zip. That was the same zip that we would normally publish through our pipeline, except now, as you can see here, the release is kicked off and it's going to publish that zip. So we'll just give that a couple seconds to complete. Okay, so our release is now finished as well. If we go and refresh the site, you'll see that we've now published a uh, 0.4 release, which was our latest pipeline run. So if we look back at the project and we look at the artifact that was pulled in, um, you can see that was from that 0.4 release. Thank you for watching this video on migrating pipelines and releases in Azure DevOps. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, catch me on Twitter, or visit my profile page, beaming.dev, to see where else I am on the internet. Cheers.